Well, Lightroom has sure made some impressive updates over the past few months, but is it good enough to render Photoshop completely useless? Hey everybody, my name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based here in the beautiful Southern Utah area. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Lightroom and Photoshop and which one you should be using. Now, most photographers these days are starting off by using Lightroom, which is certainly the easier software to use in order to edit your photos. While Photoshop has kind of been known, I guess, for being a more powerful photo editor, um, but one of the biggest things that Photoshop used to offer over Lightroom was the ability for masking, which has since been added in Lightroom. So now the question is, in 2023, which software should you be using, Lightroom or Photoshop? And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now let's start off by talking about some of the features that Lightroom has that are not present in Photoshop. Now, first and foremost, Lightroom catalogs and stores your photos. Photoshop doesn't do either. In Lightroom, you can use folders, collections, the map, so many more different ways to store your photos. Lightroom's two most popular modules, in other words, known as user modes, uh, are the library and the develop module. Now, library allows you to quickly search around and find a photo or even a group of photos, even allowing you to view all things like the metadata, the name your photo, add keywords, and a whole slew of other options. Once you've found the photo you wanna edit, then you're gonna switch into develop module, which then gives access to all sorts of different sliders, allowing you to control your image with global adjustments. For advanced editors, then you can go further and even make local adjustments. As I mentioned before, these local adjustments were one of the pain points making Lightroom not nearly as powerful as Photoshop, but in the last year, Lightroom has significantly buffed up the local adjustments. You used to be able to only make an adjustment with a gradient or a freehand brush, which is still an option, of course, but now you can also use color masking, luminance masking, or even subject masking, which uses a little bit of AI. Prior to this update, you were only able to do this kind of masking in Photoshop. Now, before we talk more about all the features in Lightroom, I wanna interject here to mention that while Lightroom's masking options are certainly great features and they're definitely welcomed, uh, the tools that you use for masking in Photoshop are still far more robust and they work a little bit better. For intermediate level photographers, I think the masking options in Lightroom will be sufficient, but for more advanced edits, using Lightroom's masking tools can sometimes be really, really frustrating. Now, Lightroom also has spot healing tools similar to Photoshop, but again, I think the spot healing tools do work a little bit better and have more options and customizability, if that's even a word, in Photoshop. Uh, basically, everything you see in Lightroom's develop module is available in Photoshop as Adobe Camera Raw, which is a plugin, so to speak, but it automatically comes with Photoshop and it can be used on your photo layer in Photoshop. Now, let, speaking of photo layers, let's talk about Photoshop and where it exceeds Lightroom. The one limitation that you have in Lightroom is that you don't have layers like you do in Photoshop. Now, layers help you to organize adjustments made to your photo, but most importantly, they offer you the ability to combine multiple different photos into one photo. Now, before you tune this part out, because I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, and that is that you don't make composites, you don't combine photos, but you do need to understand there are many benefits, and I can almost assure you that if you wanna become better at photography, you will do this at some point. Combining multiple photos, oftentimes, um, in, as a landscape photographer, we do it in what's called the focus stack, where you combine two photos shot just two seconds, three seconds, four seconds apart at the same focal length with just a different focus point. This helps you to get a photo that's sharp from end to end, since you wouldn't have everything in the scene in focus if you've got a foreground that's close and you've got a background that's far away. Now, combining photos doesn't always have to mean you're doing something like doing a sky swap or completely faking an image or moving a mountain, um, but I just wanted to make you aware that you cannot do a focus stack in Lightroom. Now anyways, you cannot combine two images in Lightroom other than for panos or HDR images. Uh, focus stacking is not currently possible at the time of this recording in Lightroom. Photoshop also offers you lots more customization options in Lightroom. While most plugins work for both Lightroom and Photoshop, there's a lot of uh, Photoshop exclusive plugins. One of the most commonly used plugins for landscape photographers is a panel. Lots of different panels available to choose from. I personally use the TK panel, which allows me to make luminosity masks, but I know a lot of other photographers use different panels that give you other effects and other settings that can make your photos look really amazing. In addition, Photoshop has a good portion of built-in effects, things like special sharpening, blurs, warping, all that can be done in Photoshop, not in Lightroom though. Again, you may be thinking that these are tools that you're never going to use, but trust me, you may wanna use them at some point 
in your photography career. For example, uh, I really like to use the Gaussian blur filter for the Orton effect, which creates a little subtle glow in the image. And sometimes I'll even use the Smart Sharpen filter in Photoshop for sharpening my image. I'll even use from time to time the Warp or the Liquify tool in order to slightly fix compositions as I see fit. Now finally, Lightroom also gives you the ability to put together a book or make a slideshow or even to soft proof prints or create a web gallery. These features are pretty seldom used by most photographers, including myself. I actually have never used these features, but I've looked at them and I know there's certainly somebody out there watching this video that does use them. So I did want to mention it because it's important for you to know that you can't do it in Photoshop. On Photoshop, you truly have an amazing variety of tools, which can both be a blessing and a curse. More tools means more confusion, and if you don't know what they do. Now, I set my Photoshop up a certain way to get rid of 75% of what's on the screen to make it work for me for photo editing. Lucky for me, I got a degree in graphic design, so I have learned that Photoshop software in and out. I know the tools that I do and don't need for photography, and I actually even have a YouTube video that I cover exactly how to set up your workspace. I'll link it here for you guys to check it out. You should definitely Definitely, definitely check it out if you're new to Photoshop or if you struggle to use the right tools in all of the clutter that is there in Photoshop. Finally, the TLDR, which obviously if you made it this far and you haven't skipped ahead, you already know, is that I think that both Lightroom and Photoshop provide their own advantages. Lightroom is gonna be excellent. It is just amazing for cataloging and storing your photos for quick access. I personally think it's the best on the market. Offers a really easy way to edit your photos at an intermediate level. Now, Photoshop's gonna be the go-to for advanced editing. You certainly don't need to take all of your photos into Photoshop, but some photos will require things that you can only do in Photoshop. Even if you don't wanna learn the whole program, it is useful to learn a little bit in order to do common tasks that photographers may need to do in Photoshop. Now, me personally, I use both softwares a ton. I store all my photos in Lightroom and sometimes make those beginner edits using just the simple sliders before launching into Photoshop and then doing my whole edit there. Now, from Photoshop, it's really easy for me to save my file and have it appear right back in Lightroom where it'll be stored amongst all of my other photos. So I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really, really, really hope that it was helpful for you guys. If it was, leave me a thumbs up, leave a subscription and let me know if you guys have any more questions down below in the comments. I want to thank you guys all so much for checking out this week's video. We will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.